coming back on Saturday night. And these three uh, volunteers had qu asked them a lot of questions. They began to realize that um, what, they, what they needed, what the men needed, was community. Um, they had no place to lay their heads. They, uh, they wanted something more than the way they were living on the streets. And so Ned, Tim, and Alan said, why don't we see if we can get a place where these, we could provide a community for these young men. I knew Ned Murphy and I knew of his commitment to the social justice issues of the time and he was very, very concerned about young people who were addicted to drugs and alcohol. And of course I knew Jane. And I was very excited about the issue. And so we kept looking and looking and finally the pastor of St. Nicholas of Tolentine said to Tim and I, there's a place on Fordham Road that you might, a storefront that you might be interested in. It was small, uh, had a bathroom, a little kitchen, a place to serve, and uh, sort of like a, a loft upstairs. And so we said yes, with nothing. We began to elicit donations. Uh, one school gave us a double sink. My mother gave us the refrigerator. Somebody else gave us the stove. And uh, tables and chairs we got from friends, either from Jesuits or Sisters of Charity's work. We were very lucky because the Sisters of Charity uh, in their local communities gave us donations every month. Different houses gave us their monthly charity. The Jesuits were good to us. Uh, local schools. Uh, gave us milk, uh, bread stores that were getting rid of their bread, they couldn't use it the next day, we had bread. And there I saw um, just a real authentic way of being with poor people. A great, I think, understanding of what's possible when people come together with their gifts and their weaknesses, um, but the desire to do good um, and to create community, which was basically what we had. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we didn't have a lot of money at that time, I don't think. Uh, and I speak, to, I speak as, a, as a communal thing, you know. Um, it was Ned and Jane and Tim and I at the beginning. Um, and all the people from Covenant House and all the people from Rye who were drawn in. Things. And so a whole community began to develop around pots. We would uh, have Sunday liturgy and both the people served and the people who were serving would come and sit together and share on the readings and celebrate Mass. Because there was always a religious presence there and yes, people were drawn to it for that reason. Another thing that we did was take uh, the book of Isaiah and again, those served and those serving reflected on what this meant in terms of their life experience, the exile that they had and the hope that they might have for the future. But we still needed more money. And so one of our plans was to write to all the parishes in our area and ask them if we could come, that Ned would talk about um, what POTS was and we would stand outside and collect money that I taught in Rye High School, uh, Resurrection. Uh, our sisters were very involved in POTS. And so they went to the pastor to have uh, Ned preach. They were the ones who kept going back to say we have to do more about this. And so uh, both from the pastor and the people in the parish, the relationship in Rye and Pot with Rye and POTS began to grow to the point where uh, Resurrection Parish really adopted POTS as its ministry. And the wonderful people in uh, Resurrection Parish just kept getting more and more involved. One of the purposes of POTS, besides feeding the hungry, besides looking at the causes of what caused hunger, but that we would build a community of those serving and those who were served. The Sisters of Charity were a great support and uh, manifestation of how to bring people together. You know, the rich and the poor, 
uh, knowing the mission of the Sisters of Charity, um, to live the mission of Jesus, and to serve those in, who live in poverty. And there's a line from the old rule that says, especially those who, because of their shame, would hide their needs from you. I think a very powerful meaning for me was delivering the kinds of service and presence that people felt comfortable enough for you, mm -hmm. to you, for you, with you, to tell their stories. I want to say, we've modeled a lot of POTS on the Catholic worker model from Dorothy Day. Um, Dorothy Day was a lay woman, so she put in the title uh, of her place, of her soup kitchen, the Catholic worker, because it was explicit. Well, with us, we had Ned and Jane, who were explicit um, incarnations, sort of, of the Catholic way. Paul, in 1996, Father Ned came to me because he had gotten bad news about his own health and felt he did not have long to live. And his concern was the mission of POTS. But the mission of the Sisters of Charity has always been to care for the poor in whatever way we can render assistance. So I felt that our mission and the mission of POTS as a, a newly uh, born enterprise really came together. And I had no hesitancy about asking our board if this was acceptable. At the Thanksgiving early dinners at St. Nicholas the Talentine basement. So it must have been 82, 83, 84. Uh, Margaret Murphy, Ned's sister, who would be on the train with the big turkey and trying mm -hmm. to keep it from falling over or spilling yeah. over. Yeah. For several years I was there. I worked in the kitchen making gravy. Uh, one of the things that surprised me, I remember going in to where the people were seated and I sort of expected it would be homeless men, but there were so many families with children it just really touched my heart. I have many memories of the early days of going to the soup kitchen, of the endless pots that we washed, and the gallons of soup that we made. And I liked going there. I loved going there because it was a place where the mission of the Sisters of Charity and the mission of pots intersected in the people that were served. What I remember about POTS was uh, a couple of summers in the 80s, the early 80s, either uh, volunteering to help or being in charge of the soup kitchen. And the exciting and scary part, mm -hmm. all together, was you never knew what to expect. Um, how many people to expect, how many volunteers to expect. There were no ethnic uh, divisions there. I mean, and um, I just remembered it was a wonderful crew of people, a, a lot of Sisters of Charity, but also lay people that had been uh, asked by, I'm sure, Jane and Ned and some key people in the beginning. Um, so we helped out in the kitchen, we arranged tables so that when people came to have a dinner it would be a dignified place and also spend some time talking to people while they were having their dinners with their families. So that was... I just think, uh, yes, you can serve food, you can give them places to sleep, you can give them clothes, but without this spirit of the place, the soul of the place, um, being enhanced by uh, a religious tradition, I do think that people who are suffering so need a spiritual healing. In uh, 1999, the Sisters of Charity started Sisters Hill Farm. And as director of the farm, I immediately thought of POTS because 
an important part of our farm's mission is to give away a portion of the weekly harvest to those in need. So a partnership began in 1999, and since that time, POTS has received a portion of the harvest of fresh, wholesome, organically grown vegetables. It's wonderful seeing these kids who have time um, and who want to help others and they themselves don't come from much. Um, I would hope we can continue to sponsor that the, the people that are doing the actual work, whether it be the staff, the day volunteers, or the board, um, know that they have the support and the guidance and the wisdom uh, of the sisters behind them and with them and for them. From the very beginning, POTS has tried to be a caring community, a community that gives the message that we care about you individually. And my hope is that that would always continue. As we look back at the beginning, um, you know, we look at Jane, Sister Jane, and Father Ned, and again the seed that I spoke of, um, and it was an openness. That was something very different. We were involved in institutions at the time. So to have a, uh, this kind of a ministry was not the norm either for the Jesuits or for the Sisters of Charity. And so I, I guess I just would challenge those who are on the board, those who are working, to be open to where the Spirit is leading the ministry today. It might look different than it was 20 years ago, but that we be people faithful to prayer and to the Spirit, uh, listening to, to where God's calling us in the service of the poor and the marginalized today. And my hope is that it will continue even when there are no Sisters of Charity available, because there is a model of sponsorship that provides for lay leaders who are really suitably pre prepared to undertake this in the name of the church.